morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get started, this is a special service for All Saints Day. There are candles, votive candles in the back, and we invite each of you to take one or two to remember your loved ones who have passed triumphantly through death to life everlasting. There will be a portion of the service where you're invited to come to the altar to light a candle in their memory uh, to represent your prayer, your love for each of them. So please, if you haven't had a candle yet, please go back and get one. And I would like to take this part of the service before we start to thank someone very special. Uh, I took a sabbatical this past month to go to Europe, and I left the church in the good hands of Janet Arnett. Now, it's one thing when you get messages from the congregation saying how, what a wonderful job Janet is doing, but it's something else entirely when you start hearing from people in other states and in other countries brag on Janet and her preaching and her leadership. Uh, one lady commented, wow, you should stay away longer. We really like her. So Janet, uh, one Sunday when I was in Rome, I went and there was the papal audience and Pope Francis came out and he blessed all of us and he blessed all of our rosaries. Uh, I carry a rosary, you may notice, around my arm, my hand. It was given to me by one of my all-time favorite teachers and she told me that wherever I went in life, whatever I did, that God was only a whisper of a prayer away. And she gave me that green rosary as that reminder. And I've always cherished that. And that rosary has always been very special to me. So Janet, while I was in Rome and for that papal audience, I, I got you a rosary. And it was blessed by Pope Francis. And so I want to give this to you as my thank you for all you've done for this church in this past month. And also during the pandemic. I know that when you started this journey to be a lay servant, I, didn't, I don't think you expected all of this, that you were, what you were going to be thrown into. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And I hope whenever you touch these beads, you'll remember God is only the whisper of a prayer away. Thank you. Wow. And it's my favorite color. It's blue. Thank you. In the darkest of night, when we feel most afraid, someone comes alongside of us, a man walking in the darkness as if the darkness were day. Please God join me in the response. God, God of life, God. Come, Come and wipe, and wipe away, away the tears, the tears from us. our eyes. In the storms of life, when we feel buffeted, our dreams blown and torn, our trust stretched to its fullest, Jesus calls our name and calms the storms that assail us. God of hope, come and wipe away the tears from our eyes. In the trails of life, when we feel overwhelmed by worry and apprehension, Jesus reaches out a hand, invites us to trust, and we find we can walk on water. God of love, come and wipe away the tears from our eyes. Dying Christ destroyed our death. Rising Christ restores our life. Christ will come again in glory to restore all that has been lost and all that has been broken. We light this Easter candle as a remember of the life and resurrection that Jesus Christ gives to all. We light this candle as a remembrance that death is never the last words that are ever spoken in our lives. Christ has overcome death. Hear these words of grace. Christ said, I am the life and I am the resurrection. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me will never die. I am the first and the last. 
the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, all of you shall live as well. Let us remember those words of grace and the hope that Christ gives to all. My friends, this service is an Easter service, for it finds all of its meaning in the resurrection. Because Christ was raised from the dead, we know that we too shall be raised. This service is thereby characterized by joy in the certainty that neither life nor death, nor angels nor principalities, nor nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor anything in all of creation will ever be able to come between us and the love that God holds for us. This joy of this service, however, does not make our grief unchristian. The very love that we hold for one another brings us such deep sorrow when we're parted by death. And so while we gather to remember and to rejoice in the promises of the resurrection, we're also here to hold each other's hands, to embrace one another in our grief, to acknowledge our loss and to comfort one another. I hope that this service brings you much joy and much comfort in your time of grief. Praise be to God. Amen. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name, knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name, knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. May we pray. Dear God, we thank you for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in small country churches, in crumbling inner city sites, in open fields, on ships at sea, 
or in grand, spectacular cathedrals. Let us never forget those who have gone before us. Our precious memories bring to heart and mind the sacrifices made by those hardworking, faithful saints who established the examples and pathways for us to follow to you. May we continue to learn how to walk wisely in faith, dedication, worship, and love, just as they did. Lord, you have given the saints in heaven eternal happiness and fullness of your glory. With this prayer, we humbly seek your guidance to do your will as the saints have done and to conform to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. reading today is from the Common English Bible. I'm reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 1 through 7. Then the angel showed me the river of life-giving water, shining like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, which produces 12 crops of fruit, bearing its fruit each month. The tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. There will be no longer any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They won't need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will rule forever and always. Then he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Look, I'm coming soon. Favorite is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy contained in this scroll. Thanks be to God for the gift of the scriptures. Thanks be to God. For the first time in a year and a half, I get to say this. Would you please stand and join us in the opening hymns? <laughs>
my soldiers faithful, true, and bold. Fight as the saints who nobly fought of old. And when with them the victor's crown of gold, oh, hallelujah, oh,
May we pray. God, we come now to listen to your scriptures, to meditate and reflect on your word. May the words that I share in some way help us in our time of grief and loss. And my, may my words help us to understand what you're trying to say. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. The loss we feel at this moment. Grief is bad enough without this pandemic that has kept us separate, has broken up our communities and our families, have kept us from gathering to comfort one another in our time of grief. For many of us who have lost loved ones during this past two years, we've not had the blessing of a memorial service or a gathering where our friends and family could gather with us to mourn with us, to hold our hands, to comfort us. It's been especially difficult for that. During my sabbatical, I had the blessing of being on the island of Patmos where John wrote the book of Revelation. I got to see the cave where he was exiled at, and I got to see the little island where he spent 18 months of his life not knowing if he would ever see his family or his friends again. And looking out across from that island, you could see his home city just off in the distance. Close and yet so very far, separated by a sea. And if you've ever read the words of Revelation, one of John's most powerful metaphors is that at the end, the sea will be no more. That which separates us from our loved ones will be no more. Death is certainly a separation that we feel, especially now on All Saints Day. Especially after this long pandemic when we've had to say goodbye from a distance to so many friends and family. We couldn't be there when they died. We couldn't be there for a memorial service. And so the grief is even more intense because of that. Separated, estranged. And yet John promises us that one day that sea, that separation will be no more. Death will not hold the final word on our lives. There is always life. There is always a resurrection. And for one Sunday out of the year, we gather on All Saints Day in remembrance. Not only of that promise, but also of our loved ones. It's not for an accident that this falls right at the end of the harvest season. When the people were gathering the crops to survive a winter, they also stopped to reflect that what also helped them survive was their ancestors. The people that came before them that made their life possible. There's a wonderful quote that I put on Facebook and it just resonates with me. This writer says, you know, one day as I was walking, I could hear the voice of my ancestors saying, stop, be still, listen. You are the result of the love of thousands. And I thought about that. And I thought about the history of the church, of the generations that have gone before us. Paul and Peter the disciples of Paul and Peter, their disciples, the people that built the church, that preached the faith, that shared the love down through the centuries and now millennia, they have made it possible for us to be here today. If it were not for them, we wouldn't have any of this. We would not have the faith that speaks to us in our time of grief. And that quote just resonates with me because when I look back on my life, I realize my heart, my spirit, my soul, my mind, my very life has been molded and shaped by those who came before me. If it wasn't for my grandmother, I would never have stepped foot in church. She drugged me there and told me in my 10-year-old understanding that this was important. And I remember 
as she got older and older, I remember, you know, going over to help put her to bed. And as we would shut off the lights and she laid there in bed, I could hear her whispering her prayers. Here was a woman born in the 1900s, in 1900, lived through the first airplane flight, through the Great Depression, through World War I, lost a son in World War II, lost her husband in the 1960s, lost untold numbers of mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, and yet here she was praying, thanking God for the life that she had been given. Her prayers I can still hear whispered in my ear, praying for me, for my family. If it were not for her, I would not be the person I am today. I mentioned earlier, I had a beloved history teacher that taught me so much. She gave me this rosary. And I remember my senior year, she was killed in a car wreck shortly after she gave me this. And her life still resonates with me because when I had the blessing to go over to Italy and to Greece and to Turkey and to walk in the footsteps of all that history, the one thing I wanted to do was to come back home and sit in her living room like I once did and tell her all about what I had seen because she had taught me that history. And when, I, when that came to mind, that feeling of loss came again. It's like, oh... You're no longer there. And I miss her. And I miss that blessing of being able to talk to her. I lost a wife to pancreatic cancer. Long, terrible disease. And I remember how she lingered and lingered in agony. And I remember the blank look on her face as she slipped into that coma. And I remember the nurse telling me, you don't need to stay here because she's going to hang on as long as you're worried about her. So go home, get some rest. And that night I went home and that early that next morning he called me and said, you might want to come, she's passed away. But you might want to see this. And so I went to the hospice and for the longest time, for weeks, she had had this blank look and there at the moment of her death, as if she had opened a door to something. She had the brightest smile on her face, as if heaven itself had come down to greet her. I remember these moments because they all point to the promise of resurrection and life. As John was writing the book of Revelation, his Christians, his followers were being beaten, they were being killed, they were being persecuted. The world seemed to be coming to an end, and yet he wrote some of the most beautiful words of the Bible. And it's such a tragedy that Christians have so distorted Revelation to make it into some sort of hellfire and brimstone when actually it's the most beautiful words of comfort you could ever find. The sea will be no more. God will come and wipe away every tear from our eyes so that mourning and crying and pain will be no more. And death itself will be swallowed up by God's victory. And all of us shall gather at that shining river and we will be reunited with all of those that we have loved and lost, all of those that went on before us will be there with those bright shining faces to greet us with the message of love. That's the hope John gives us. And that's why this day is so important for the life of the Christians because in the midst of the loss we feel, we have to hang on to that hope. Grief as I've learned painfully, and as many of you who are widows and widowers who have lost children, you know grief is not something you ever get over. It's there. I remember one uh, psychologist described it like this. Grief is like the burn rings on a tree. The tree will grow and grow new rings, but when you cut that tree open, that burn ring is still there. 
It never grew smaller. The tree just grew bigger. And he said, that's how your life will be with your grief. You're never going to get over this. The pain will always be there, but you'll grow. And you'll become a new person. And you'll learn to live with the pain that you feel inside. And then turning from a psychiatrist to a comic book, there was a show on uh, Disney Channel taken from a comic book called WandaVision. If you've ever seen the Marvel superheroes. But there was a whole season dedicated to how she handled her grief with the loss of her spouse. And at the end, he shows up and he whispers to her, what is grief? except the price that we pay for love. And that was so very profound to me because is that not true? The very love that we hold for one another brings us such deep sorrow when we're parted by death. And it's a pain that we wish away and yet at the same time, that pain bears witness to the love that we share with a spouse, with a mother, father, a sibling, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, a teacher, a preacher, a stranger, someone that we're mourning, a child. It's the price that we pay for having been given the gift of love. And every time I feel pain of grief, I thank God that I can feel it. Because that tells me I had something that will be given back to me at the end of days. Love is never defeated by death. Life is never extinguished by the darkness of death. Yeah, today we remember, we mourn, we cry, but we also look with hope that this is not the last chapter. Our goodbyes in this world are not final. There will be a day that we shall gather at the river and we shall see each other face to face again. All those that we loved and lost will be waiting to welcome us into heaven. So today, we light candles to remember, to honor, to bear witness to the love that shaped us and made us who we are this day. We begin by recognizing those saints in our church who have passed in the last year. We will read their names and a bell will toll. And at the end, as all the names have been read and the candles have been lit and placed here in the font, we will say a special prayer together to remember them. And then afterward, as we celebrate communion, you're each invited to come and place a candle on our altars. A candle that represents your loved one. Someone who shaped who you are. Someone who made you who you are this day. May we pray. God, we seem to give them back to you, but you first gave them to us. And so God, we pour out the waters of your blessing here in this font to remember our baptism, but to also remember that this is where their journey of faith began as well. They waded through the waters They embraced your teachings and your faith. And so, we take this water and we bless it. We ask that you would pour out your grace upon it. That as we place these candles inside this font, we may remember them and honor them and cherish the love that they've given to each of us. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen.
Tom Marler. Ruth Morrison. Tina Wilk. Richard Stevenson. Mary Carol Bocals. Ruth Rose. Lawson Beecham, Jr. La Vida Beecham. Ernie Cleveland. Dale Clifford Pyle. Barbara Jean Brown. Olive June Davis. Catherine Costa. Cynthia Jones Smith. Barbara Gandy. May we pray together for all that they have given us to make, make us, us what we you. are, that for that of them which lives and grows in, in each of us, and, and for their life that in your, your love will never, never end. We give, give you thanks, thanks O oh God. God. Amen. In a few moments, we will celebrate Holy Communion. Around the world this day, Christians are gathering to celebrate this meal. And as many Christians believe that whenever we gather to break bread and drink from the cup, we do it with all the saints of heaven and with all the angels and with all the Christians around the world. For this is an eternal meal that is always taking place. One of the most beautiful images of heaven found in the Bible is that of the great banquet table where God gathers all of His children to come to eat and to drink and to celebrate. And I think of that image and I remember all the times that I sat at my grandmother's table with family and friends to eat and to drink, to laugh, to love. That's what we do at Holy Communion. We gather as the people of God. We hold hands with each other, but we also hold hands with the saints in heaven because they are forever with us. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, 
he took a simple loaf of bread. He gave thanks to his Father in heaven. And breaking the bread, he gave it to his followers. Those tax collectors, simple fishermen, sinners and prostitutes, the people that he called his own. And he told them, take and eat. This is my body that I break for you. Do this in remembrance of me so that you will know how to live as well. Each of those followers would go out and they would give their life for the church. They would give it in service. They would give it in love. And they would make it possible for the faith to continue. And each time we come to eat and to drink, we are continuing their story. We are living out the faith that they taught us. And we're passing it on to the next generation. To our children and our grandchildren so that they too might know the hope and the promise of the love of Christ. As they ate that evening, they pondered all the words that Jesus had ever taught them. And as the supper ended, Jesus would take and He would pour a cup of the wine. He would bless it. And he would offer it to each with these words. Take and drink. This is the cup of life that I pour out for you and for all for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this and remember. Remember my love that will never let you go. May we pray. God, we bring to this table our gifts of bread and wine. And now we pray that you would pour out Your Holy Spirit upon them. That they could become for us not only the body and the blood of Christ, but His, His love, His Spirit, His grace. That we who come to eat and drink may be filled with the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. That in this meal, our eyes might be opened to the gospel of Your love. A love that cannot be extinguished by death, a love that cannot be extinguished by all the darkness in this world. Though we are brokenhearted and though we grieve now, we cling to your promises that this is not the last word, that there is a new heaven and a new earth that awaits us where the sea will be no more, where all that separates us from our loved ones will be gone forever, and we will rest in your arms for all eternity. God, heaven is a great banquet table where our loved ones are waiting for us to come to eat and drink again. And until that day arrives, we gather now at this table to remember them, to remember Your love, and to remember Your promises. As we eat and drink, let us eat and drink with them and with you and with Christ so that we can be one with you and one with Christ and one with each other until your final coming and all things will be set right again. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Will the communion stewards please come forward?
On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye To Canaan's fair and happy land Where my possessions lie o'er all those wide extended plains shine one eternal day there god the sun never ever rains and scatters night away i am then for the promised land I am banned for the promised land Oh, who will come and go with me I am bound for the promised land No chilling winds or poisonous breath that healthful shore sickness and sorrow pain and death are felt and feared no more well I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land who will come and go with me I am bound for the promised land when I shall reach that happy place I'll be forever blessed for I shall see my father's face and in some rest well I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land oh who will come and go with me well I am bound for the promised land
the promised land I'm bound for the promised land all who will come and go with me well I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land. Please stand for the benediction. And you may join in with the reading, but more importantly, listen to these words. We give thanks for the fruits of the labors of those who have died, the gifts they gave to the world, for the gifts they gave to us. Gather their fruits, the work of their hands and their hearts, into the harvest of the kingdom. We give thanks for the fruits of the labors of those who have died, and our sorrow for those who died. We look to you and to one another for comfort, Lord. Enfold in your love our aching hearts and the hearts of all who mourn. Cherish us, soothe us, console us. Teach us to believe in a future beyond tears. As we remember those we love, we remember your love for them. A love that endures from eternity to eternity. We entrust those we love to your eternal home. We commit their souls to your keeping. We go to live in hope that we will meet them in your kingdom where there are no tears, no mourning, no darkness or sorrow. For you are our light and our salvation. And we place our trust in you. Go now in God's peace. May God wipe away every tear from your eyes and leave you only the blessed memory of those whom you've loved and those who have loved us. Amen. Go in peace, and may the good Lord bless and keep you. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet, till we meet again.